Project Habakkuk or Habakkuk was a plan by the British during the Second World War to construct an aircraft carrier out of Pikrit for use against German U boats in the mid Atlantic, which were beyond the flight range of land based planes at the time. The idea came from Geoffrey Pike, who worked for Combined Operations Headquarters. History, initial concept Geoffrey Pike was an old friend of J. D. Bernal and had been recommended to Lord Mountbatten, Chief of Combined Operations by the cabinet minister Leopold Amory. Pike worked at Combined Operations Headquarters alongside Bernal and was regarded as a genius by Mountbatten. Pike conceived the idea of Habakkuk while he was in the United States organizing the production of M-29 weasels for Project Plough, a scheme to assemble an elite unit for winter operations in Norway, Romania and the Italian Alps. He had been considering the problem of how to protect seaborne landings and Atlantic convoys out of reach of aircraft cover. The problem was that steel and aluminium were in short supply, and were required for other purposes. Pike realized that the answer was ice, which could be manufactured for only 1% of the energy needed to make an equivalent mass of steel. He proposed that an iceberg, natural or artificial, be leveled to provide a runway and hollow out to shelter aircraft. From New York Pike sent the proposal via diplomatic bag to COHQ, with a label forbidding anyone apart from Mountbatten from opening the package. Mountbatten in turn passed Pike's proposal on to Churchill, who was enthusiastic about it. Pike was not the first to suggest a floating mid-ocean stopping point for aircraft, nor even the first to suggest that such a floating island could be made of ice. A German scientist, Dr. Gerk von Waldenberg, had proposed the idea and carried out some preliminary experiments on Lake Zurich in 1930. The idea was a recurring one, in 1940 an idea for an ice island was circulated around the Admiralty, but was treated as a joke by officers, including Neville Shute, who circulated a memorandum that gathered ever more caustic comments. The document had to be retrieved just before it reached the first Sea Lord's inbox. Codename and Spelling the project's code name seems to have been consistently spelled Habakkuk in official documents at the time. This may in fact have been Pike's own error, as at least one early document apparently written by him spells it that way. The name is a reference to the project's ambitious goal. Be utterly amazed, for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. David Lamp, in his book, Pike, The Unknown Genius states that the name was derived from Voltaire's Condide and was misspelled by his Canadian secretary. However, the word does not actually appear in that text, so this is probably inaccurate. Pike writ. In early 1942 Pike and Bernal called in Max Perrotz to determine whether an ice flow large enough to withstand Atlantic conditions could be built up fast enough. Perrotz pointed out that natural icebergs have too small a surface above water for an airstrip, and are prone to suddenly rolling over. The project would have been abandoned if it had not been for the invention of pikrit, a mixture of water and wood pulp that when frozen was stronger than plain ice, was slower melting and would not sink. It has been suggested that pike was inspired by Inuit sleds reinforced with moss. This is probably apocryphal, as the material was originally described in a paper by Mark and Hohenstein in Brooklyn. Pikrit could be machined like wood and cast into shapes like metal, and when immersed in water formed an insulating shell of wet wood pulp on its surface that protected its interior from further melting. However, Perrotz found a problem, ice flows slowly, in what is known as plastic flow, and his tests showed that a pikrit chip would slowly sag unless it was cooled to a 16 AA degree Celsius. To accomplish this the ship's surface would have to be protected by insulation, and it would need a refrigeration plant and a complicated system of ducts. Perrotz proceeded to conduct experiments on the viability of pikrit and its optimum composition in a secret location underneath Smithfield Meat Market in the City of London. The research took place in a refrigerated meat locker behind a protective screen of frozen animal carcasses. Scale model the decision was made to build a large-scale model at Jasper National Park in Canada to examine insulation and refrigeration techniques, and to see how pikrit would stand up to artillery and explosives. Large ice blocks were constructed at Lake Louise, Alberta, and a small prototype was constructed at Patricia Lake, Alberta, 
measuring only 60 by 30 feet, weighing 1,000 tons and kept frozen by a one-horsepower motor. The work was done by conscientious objectors who did alternative service of various kinds instead of military service. They were never told what they were building. Bernal informed COHQ that the Canadians were building a 1,000-ton model, and that it was expected to take eight men 14 days to build it. The Chief of Combined Operations responded that Churchill had invited the Chiefs of Staff Committee to arrange for an order to be placed for one complete ship at once, with the highest priority, and that further ships were to be ordered immediately if it appeared that the scheme was certain of success. The Canadians were confident about constructing a vessel for 1944. The necessary materials were available to them in the form of 300,000 tons of wood pulp, 25,000 tons of fiberboard insulation, 35,000 tons of timber and 10,000 tons of steel. The cost was estimated at a £700,000. Meanwhile Perrotts had determined via his experiments at Smithfield Market that the optimum structural properties were given by a mixture of 14% wood pulp and 86% water. He wrote to Pike in early April 1943 and pointed out that if certain tests were not completed in May, there would be no chance of delivering a completed ship in 1944. By May the problem of plastic flow had become serious and it was obvious that more steel reinforcement would be needed, as well as a more effective insulating skin around the vessel's hull. This caused the cost estimate to increase to a £2.5 million. In addition, the Canadians had decided that it was impractical to attempt the project this coming season. Bernal and Pike were forced to conclude that no Habakkuk vessel would be ready in 1944. Pike was excluded from the planning for Habakkuk in an effort to secure American participation, a decision that Bernal supported. Pike's earlier disagreements with American personnel on Project Plow, which had caused his removal from that project, were the main factor in this decision. Naval architects and engineers continued to work on Habakkuk with Bernal and Perrotts during the summer of 1943. The requirements for the vessel became more demanding, it had to have a range of 7,000 miles and be able to withstand the largest waves recorded, and the Admiralty wanted it to be torpedo-proof, which meant that the hull had to be at least 40 ft thick. The fleet air arm decided that heavy bombers should be able to take off from it, which meant that the deck had to be 2,000 ft long. Steering also raised problems. It was initially projected that the ship would be steered by varying the speed of the motors on either side, but the Royal Navy decided that a rudder was essential. However, the problem of mounting and controlling a rudder over 100 ft high was never solved. Variants, naval architects produced three alternative versions of Pike's original concept, which were discussed at a meeting with the Chiefs of Staff in August 1943, Habakukai would have been made of wood. Habakkuk II was closest to the COHQ model and would have been a very large, slow, self-propelled vessel made of pike writ with steel reinforcement. Habakkuk III was a smaller, faster version of Habakkuk II. Air Chief Marshal Portal asked about potential bomb damage to Habakkuk III, and Bernal suggested that a certain amount of deck covering might be ripped off, but could be repaired by some kind of flexible matting. It would be more difficult to deal with bomb holes in the center portion, though the roof over the aircraft hangars would be made proof against 1,000 kg bombs. Bernal considered that no one could say whether the larger Habakkuk II was a practical proposition until a large-scale model could be completed and tested in Canada in the spring of 1944. He had no doubts about the suitability of Picret as a material, but said that constructional and navigational difficulties remained to be overcome. The final design of Habakkuk II gave the Berg ship a displacement of 2.2 million tons. Steam to bowl generators were to supply 33,000 HP for 26 electric motors mounted in separate external nacelles. Its armament would have included 40 dual barreled 4.5 inches DP turrets and numerous light anti aircraft guns, and it would have housed an airstrip and up to 150 twin engine bombers or fighters. Shooting incident According to some accounts, at the Quebec Conference in 1943 Lord Mountbatten brought a block of pikerit along to demonstrate its potential to the admirals and generals who accompanied Winston Churchill and Franklin D. Roosevelt. 
Mountbatten entered the project meeting with two blocks and placed them on the ground. One was a normal ice block and the other was Pikrit. He then drew his service pistol and shot at the first block. It shattered and splintered. Next he fired at the Pikrit to give an idea of the resistance of that kind of ice to projectiles. The bullet ricocheted off the block, grazing the trouser leg of Admiral Ernest King, and ended up in the wall. Sir Alan Brooks' diaries support this account, telling how Mountbatten brought two blocks, one of ice and one of pikrit. After first shooting at the ice, with a warning to beware of splinters, Mountbatten said I shall fire at the block on the right to show you the difference. Brooke reported that the bullet rebounded out of the block and buzzed round our legs like an angry bee. Max Peratz gave an account of a similar incident in his book I Wish I Made You Angry Earlier. A demonstration of Pikrit was given at Combined Operations Headquarters by a naval officer, Lieutenant Commander Douglas Grant, who was provided by Peratz with rods of ice and Pikrit packed with dry ice in thermos flasks and large blocks of ice and Pikrit. Grant demonstrated the comparative strength of ice and Pikrit by firing bullets into both blocks, the ice shattered. But the bullet rebounded from the pikrit and hit the chief of the imperial staff in the shoulder. Brooke was unhurt. And of project, later in 1943 Habakkuk began to lose priority. Mountbatten listed several reasons, demand for steel for other purposes was too great. Permission had been received from Portugal to use airfields in the Azores, which facilitated the hunting of U-boats in the Atlantic. The introduction of long-range fuel tanks allowed British-based aircraft extra patrol time over the Atlantic, the numbers of escort carriers were being increased. In addition, Mountbatten himself withdrew from the project. The final meeting of the Habakkuk, SIG board took place in December 1943. It was officially concluded that the large Habakkuk II made of pikrit has been found to be impractical because of the enormous production resources required and technical difficulties involved. The use of ice had actually been falling out of favor before that, and other ideas for floating islands had been considered, such as welding liberty ships or landing craft together. It took three hot summers to completely melt the prototype constructed in Canada. Perrotts wrote that he stayed in Washington, D.C. While U.S. Navy engineers evaluated the viability of Habakkuk, he concluded, the U.S. Navy finally decided that Habakkuk was a false prophet. One reason was, that the enormous amount of steel needed for the refrigeration plant that was to freeze the pikrit was greater than that needed to build the entire carrier of steel. But the crucial argument was that the rapidly increasing range of land-based aircraft rendered floating islands unnecessary. Criticism The Habakkuk design received criticism, notably from Sir Charles Goodiff, Assistant Controller of Research and Development for the Admiralty during the Second World War. In an article published after the war Goodiff pointed out the large amount of wood pulp that would be required, enough to affect paper production significantly. He also claimed that each ship would require 40,000 tons of cork insulation, thousands of miles of steel tubing for brine circulation and four power stations, but that for all those resources Habakkuk would be capable of traveling at only six knots of speed. His article also contained extensive derisive comments about the properties of ice as used for ship construction. Recent recreations in the 15th April 2009 episode of the US TV show Mythbusters Jamie Hinman and Adam Savage built a small boat out of a modified version of Pikrit, using newspaper instead of wood pulp. They successfully piloted the boat in Alaskan waters at a speed of 25 miles per hour and inferred that it is possible to build a boat out of Pikrit. They also concluded that Pikrit lived up to its purported properties of being bulletproof stronger than ice and taking longer to melt than ice. However, they expressed doubt that an aircraft carrier made of pikrit could have survived for long. The conclusion was plausible, but ludicrous. In September 2010 the BBC programme Bangos the Theory also attempted to recreate a pikrit boat. A hull using 5,000 kg of hemp fibre pikrit was frozen in a cold store, then launched in Portsmouth Harbour for a planned trip across the Solent to Cowes. The hull immediately started to leak because of the holes that had been cut in its rear to mount an outboard motor. See also, Mobile Offshore Base, Notes References Further reading, 
per arts, MFA description of the iceberg aircraft carrier and the bearing of the mechanical properties of frozen wood pulp upon some problems of glacier flow. The Journal of Glaciology 1, 95 a Euro 104 a, cross, LD codename Habakkuk, a secret ship made of ice. British Columbia, Canada, Heritage House Publishing Company Limited. ISBN A 978-1-927051-47-4, external links, Goodiv, CF, Bergship, Goodiv CAA. Some notes on the article by Per Arts referenced above. Habakkuk, Royal Naval Mujma. Strange Story of HMS Habakkuk, The War Illustrated, April 12, 1946 A. Modern, Venture Across America and Canada, you holler.